G'day, Blade Dickheads, Vaping Bogan, back again for another Dinky Die review. Hope you're all doing tip fucking top. We've got a new RTA gear towards the mouth to lungers. It's from BP Mods, and they've teamed up with a few others. It's called the Labs MTL RTA, and I believe the reason it's called the Labs uh, RTA is because of the uh, designers involved, the four Italian designers that BP Mods got involved, uh, Luca, uh, Alan, Bruce, and I think it's Stefano. I think that's uh, their, their first initials that they've um, given the acronym of LABS. It's a top-down wicking system and it's got uh, four interchangeable uh, chimney or chamber sections so you can change up how the sort of flavor comes out. I've got it sitting atop the uh, BP Mods Lightsaber Model S. Nice little combo, these two. Very nice and compact. So I'm not sure the connection of the four designers involved with this one. I'm not sure whether Labs is actually like a, a company or a design group based out of Italy or whether it's just four random Italians that they've got involved with the design process. But that's the uh, the name behind the name as such. Uh, let's just take it for a little rip -a I've got a uh, 0.8 ohm single coil in here, running it to uh, 17 watts. Really nice flavor off of this fucker. I've tried a couple of the different um, chamber inserts and uh, both of them taste pretty good, but there's four in total, so you can sort of play around with them and find your sweet spot. We're gonna get down uh, and have a look at all the bits and bobs and how this sort of system works. But before we can do that, yeah, we're gonna have a fucking beer, eh? Got me a double blood orange Nipah called Bloodzilla 2022 edition. It's from Dainton Brewery, and uh, yeah, they make some pretty tasty beers. So a double New England India Pale Ale with uh, blood oranges in here. In 2017, a blood orange flavor bomb was dropped on the unsuspecting people of Caram Downs. Experts suggested that the fallout was harmless. They were bloody wrong. <laughs> so uh, they've been doing this one for a little while. I reckon I've had some from the previous years. I don't know whether I've had the 2022 version, uh, but uh, it comes in at a fairly hefty 7.5 fucking percent, given that it is a, a double Nipah. And uh, yeah, brewed over in Caram Downs, Victoria. Let's just see how it bloody tastes. Let's drink a Well, there you go, Dick. It's nice and hazy as you'd expect for a Nipah. Oh, fuck yeah, that smells bloody good. Real tropical, but with a, uh, a very noticeable sort of orangey, zesty aroma. Fucking cheers. That's fucking delicious. Or as the uh, people at Labs might say, bellissimo. <laughs> that is real fucking tasty. Very citrusy, really nice and, and sort of slightly thick being a, a Nipah and yeah, a real whack of that sort of orange citrus flavor. Very sort of zesty and um, yeah, real natural orange taste coming out of that. That's bloody delicious. Yeah, there's some nice pineapple sort of flavors in there as well, but um, yeah, it's sort of straight up fucking orange, citrus, uh, very, uh, very nice IPA sort of hoppy flavors in the background there, good bitterness to it. And yeah, as I said, sort of that slight tropical kind of creaminess as well, being a, a New England style. Bloody good. Let's pair it up with a fucking liquid. To go with our very citrusy beer, we've got one of my favorite citrusy liquids. This one's from Mr. Wiki's. It's Splice. It's a, uh, a lime and pineapple flavor based off the sort of classic Aussie ice cream, Splice. So many of my fellow Aussies will have grown up enjoying a tasty little fucking Splice icy pole after school. I certainly fucking did. One of my favorites, I reckon, as a kid. It's like a uh, vanilla ice cream center and then coated in like a, a pineapple and lime icy pole um, or I think in some places around the world you call them lollies, that we call like candy lollies. So yeah, it's an icy pole over the top of vanilla ice cream. But the pineapple and lime with the vanilla on the inside was delicious. This has got that real nice pineapple and lime with a, just a hint, a subtle bit of creaminess in the middle there. Let's uh, fucking pair it up. Let's see, fucking should go well. Plenty of citrus here. That's fucking good. Yeah, really bringing out some uh, pineapple flavors in the beer for sure. Lifting uh, some of that uh, sort of very subtle pineapple now, getting a bit more stronger with the uh, addition of um, pine from the uh, liquid. Also, the lime is a nice sort of extra added citrusiness to the beer.
Yep, that is a citrus. That is a very citrusy fucking pairing. I like that a lot. That is fucking good. Pineapple. Getting a lot of pineapple mixing nicely with that orange as well. And um, yeah, just a, a beautiful fucking, very summery fucking pairing there. Good warm weather beer, which we got plenty of. Usually, well, at the moment it's kind of been raining, but most of the fucking last few months have been pretty summery. So that's a, a good beer for that. Anyway, I'm fucking waffling. <laughs> Let's get down the up and close. We're going to break this thing apart, show you how the wicking works and uh, the sort of interchangeable uh, system of um, chambers. And then we'll do a little wicking tutorial for you as well. Let's have a sticky beak. All fucking righty then. So this is the packaging. Your labs RT8 will come in pretty standard for BP mods. And if I flip it over, being careful to cover the website, uh, as you can see, it is manufactured by Dovpo. We all know that about BP mods. And it's got the uh, the names of the designers, the Italian designers involved. Uh, so you got Luca, you got Alan, you got Bruce, and you get Stefan or Stefano. Um, so that's where the name Labs comes from. And as you can see on the side here, it does say designed in Italy. So they're all uh, Italian people. Anyway, let's see what you get inside. Well, you got the tank. You got three alternative what they call bell caps, or basically the inside top of your uh, chamber. You get a tool for removing those little inside caps, but also uh, getting the airflow pins in and out. And you get a bag of those airflow pins, a bunch of different spare O-rings, as well as some spare screws for the deck in both Phillips and Flathead, and a couple of uh, coils clapped in one round wire and a little components list and breakdown card. But let's get into it. So it's 22 millimeters in diameter. It's quite a tall tank. And uh, this is what they call DLC black, which looks more like a gun metal to me. It doesn't really look like a, a black, but DLC black is what they've named it. Very nice though, matches pretty much perfectly with the uh, recent BP Mods lightsaber, which as you can see is, is a gun metal. Uh, they also do it in your regular stainless steel, um, but I uh, haven't seen any other colors apart from those two. Up the top, you've got a 510 drip tip, pretty sort of standard shape for your MTL sort of style, narrow and long. And you've got a bit of uh, what I'm pretty sure is Latin. A bit of a Google search tells me that uh, the sol means sun, uh, lucet means to shine or emit light, um, and the uh, omnibus means everyone. So I'm guessing that means sunshine everyone kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> or sunshine for everybody. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you got a bit of uh, Latin on there. That's not Latin. <laughs> All right. Fill cap is a reverse threaded quarter turn system. So you're going to twist it clockwise to open it up to fill. Off comes the cap. Nice and simple fill system there. And you can kind of see down in there, there's a little bit of a sliding mechanism. You've got a couple of little notches on the top of the uh, the chimney here. It basically locks and unlocks the juice flow uh, as you open or close the, uh, the top there, which is pretty handy. So if we unscrew the polycarbonate section, like so, you can see that chimney there now a bit easier. And you can see that if I twist it, ah, we've opened up our juice flow, those holes are exposed and we've closed them again. So yeah, as you open it, it closes them, and as you uh, screw it back on, it opens it, so you don't have to worry about flooding your uh, your coil when you uh, go to take the top off to fill it. So pretty clever, that comes off if you wanna get in there and clean everything. And uh, this is a, a polycarbonate tank section in smoked. Makes it look very nice, gonna be fairly durable. And then we just anti-clockwise to uh, screw it back on. Moving our way down, we've got a little Labs logo down the base here, and you can see there's a little notch, so there's only one way to put the deck in. The deck is this section on the bottom here. We just pull it straight off. I'll show you that in a moment. You've got an airflow hole on three sides. I think, is it three or four? One, two, three, three. Yeah, there you go. So you've got one, two, and three airflow slots, but the airflow is controlled via a pin, but that's sort of where the airflow comes in. Uh, on the base there, you've got designed in Italy, you've got a serial number, you've got the BP, and you've got the Labs logo, and you've got a hybrid safe 510 pin. As you can see, that gold portion is sticking out from the stainless steel thread, so if you wanted to use it on a hybrid mech, you could. And uh, to get to the deck, all we do is grab the base here, and it's going to be a little sticky when there's no liquid on the O-rings, but um, not too hard. You just pull off the base, there you go. 
and you've got your uh, your build deck and you've got the inside of the uh, the chamber there and these are the removable interchangeable bell caps as you can see those two little ports one on either side that's where your liquid is going to be coming down so it's a top down wicking system and uh, as you can see we've got um, this sort of step down bell cap with a bunch of holes milled into it and then you've got uh, a few others that um, they include. Now, I think they've actually included two of the same for me um, by accident. This one is identical to this one. And looking at the little little card here, you can see that there's actually meant to be four different ones. And only one of them has all the little holes around the inside. Uh, I think I'm missing... Um, this one here that's sort of not stepped down. It's just got one step and then a dome. I've got this one, I've got this one, I've got this one. I don't have this one. So, sorry, I can't show you that one, guys, uh, because they gave me two of the same bloody one, two of these. Um, but yeah, you get four different um, bell cap designs. These two look quite similar, but as you can see, the step down on this one is kind of like curved. All right, it's kind of like milled in a curved step down. And then this one here is kind of like more of a cone step down. So you've got three steps. Two of the, the smaller ones are kind of angular on a hard sort of, you know, cone angle. And then this one here kind of like has a bit of a seashell sort of curve to each step. Uh, and then this one here has the little holes bored into it, which uh, is sort of, a little different to what you typically see. Now to get those guys out, to change them out, you just take off the fill cap. So you're probably going to want to do this when you don't have any liquid in here. You take this little tool that it came with, all right, you just poke that through the chimney and you just push. And out pops your little bell cap, O-ring sort of keep it all in place in there. And as you can see, that's the inside, and we can just change that out with one of these inserts if we want to uh, get a different sort of flavor profile. In it goes. So there's the little bell cap system. Pretty cool that they've included four different ones. Well, in the, uh, the ones that you get, you'll get four. I just got three. <laughs> Let's move on to the build deck. It's a fairly straightforward, sort of simple build deck we've seen before. Two large flathead screws it's very much like uh, a k-fun or um, my ether rta the screws look pretty much the same size as the ether if you're familiar with the ether um, build deck basically got the same thing here you've got two little walls or little tabs on either side of the screw so you can put your coil leg under either side of the screw the little wall there will keep it in place and you just clamp it down with the uh, the screw there in the middle you've got your airflow pin which is removed via this little tool again so you just get in here it's got like a little kind of squared edge on the pin and it just locks in either side of it and then you just spin him out out comes your airflow pin i'm using the one millimeter pin or i'm pretty sure it's the one millimeter pin because they don't actually have anything written on the pins to tell you um, what size it is so you kind of have to eyeball them up against each other, but you do get a bag of uh, options there. So you've got a 0.8 millimeter, a 1 millimeter, a 1.1, a 1.2, and a 1.5. And you could, in theory, run it without an airflow pin, I'm pretty sure. And I did a little measurement, and you're looking at about 3.8 millimeters. I think it will work with no airflow pin in there. But obviously, it is geared towards the uh, mouth to lungers, given that the sort of largest pin they include is 1.5. Um, maybe there's some people out there that would have liked maybe a 2 millimeter, but uh, sorry, no option for that. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty simple sort of wicking system. You're going to put your coil in, you're going to stick your cotton into either side in those little V's there, and then uh, as you put the top cap down, um, those two little shoots are going to line up and sort of press into the cotton on either side there. Uh, and that's how you um, wick it. It's sort of gravity fed down from above. So just make sure that you have sufficient cotton in either side of these little Vs so that when those little shoots come down, they sort of go into the, uh, the cotton 
make a good contact or else you'll get flooding. And I found it to be quite efficient, um, these, these shoots. No problems delivering liquid um, into my cotton there, and I didn't thin it out or, or anything, just stuck the cotton straight in, kept it fairly fluffy and um, fairly uh, large amounts of cotton for an MTL RTA. All right, so let's have a look at the coil that I've been using. But before we do that, I'm just going to show you what happened to one of these screw heads as I went to sort of retighten uh, down on it. The resistance sort of changed a little from what it had been, and so I thought, well, logical thing, give the screws a quick check and tighten them up. Uh, and the top of the screw just split into two half of that flat head just sheared straight off so uh yeah that's uh, not fucking great thankfully they do include a bunch of spares uh, there's some spare flat heads in the bag but there's also some spare uh, optional um, phillips heads so if you're a bit worried about the um the flat heads uh, doing this then you can put the phillips in there it's got a little bit more of a sort of meaty head. You don't have a slice right through the top like you do on a flathead screw. Um, but uh, we'll just go ahead and replace one of these in a moment. Before we do that, the uh, the coil that I've been using uh, is from Coils by Scott. Fucking shout out to you, mate. Always a tasty vape and a beautifully made coil. These are one of his uh, Fuse Claptons, MTL Fuse Clapton. Uh, you're looking at uh, three strands, two strands, two strands of 30 gauge wrapped in 40 gauge nichrome, 0.72 ohms. Mine's been right around that. And uh, six wraps, 2.5 millimeter inner diameter. So it sits in there nicely. And uh, yeah, a beautifully made coil as always from Scott. Great flavor, very tasty. Been very happy with this. So fucking cheers, mate. So uh, what we'll do, dickheads, is uh, whip out that uh, busted flathead and uh, pop in a freshie and then put in some fresh fucking cotton. <laughs> doing dickheads is cutting the cotton just a little wider than the edge of the RTA itself and then I'm kind of poking the bottom of the the cotton taking it from down here right taking that little edge and I'm putting it in first I'm just folding it underneath itself getting it underneath kind of folding it and then we can fold the the top down into the channel because I want to keep this cotton as fluffy as possible because it's pretty efficient from what I found on the whole wicking side of things. And I want to make sure that uh, I'm keeping that cotton nice and high and fluffy to kind of make contact with those little little tubes that are going to be poking down from our top section. So I want to keep all of this kind of puffed up, fluffed up, not thinning any of it out, just tucking it in. So it should look something like that. And that way, when you put down your uh, top section, the little shoots line up nicely with our wicks. So there you go. That's how I've been fucking doing it, and it's been working just great. Juice it up, but again, make sure you don't pack in the cotton with your liquids. Keep it nice and fluffy, and then we're going to uh, thread on. We'll basically just slide down our top section, lining up a little groove here with our little notch on the side there. On it goes. Here we go, and reverse threaded cap, remember, off comes the top. Should be juice flow closed, yep, great. And then we just dump our liquid in. And thread our cap back on, it should open up the juice flow control. Remember, we're going to go anti-clockwise to screw it on. So there we go. And that is our Labs MTL RTA. Let's jump back up top, talk pros, cons, prices, and everything fucking else. So there you go, dickheads. The Labs MTL RTA, very sleek, very nice looking tank, that's for sure. I definitely think aesthetically it's pretty pleasing on the eyes. Got that sort of simple 
you know, European, Italian sort of design to it. You can definitely tell that uh, it's had some of that influence. Let's talk pros and cons though. What do I like? What do I fucking dislike? Well, as I mentioned, the uh, the aesthetics, very nice. For me, I really like the look of this one. Very clean, very Euro. <laughs> no, but it's a, it's a nice looking fucking RTA. It's got some really good features in here, some practical features. Things like the reverse um, fill cap system that opens and closes the juice flow. As you open it, it locks off the juice flow, fill it up. You don't have to worry about it overfilling or flooding uh, your deck uh, and then automatically opens as soon as you uh, put that cap back on. So that's a clever little bit of design there. Very easy to access the build deck. If you need to do a quick check on your cotton, if you need to do a, a re-wick, uh, it's very easy to sort of pull off the uh, the top here. Make sure you tip the tank upside down so you don't have liquid come pouring out. But it's very simple to just uh, do a, a straight up um, re-wick. You don't have to drain the tank. Uh, you don't even have to unscrew anything. You just pull the top off. So practically very simple there. Uh, it's definitely got some really nice fucking flavor to it. Um, now the different bell caps or the different interior caps on it, the, the little chamber inserts there. Personally, I haven't noticed a huge difference. It could be the juices that I'm using. Um, the flavor is fantastic. Some of the best that you're gonna get out of an MTL RTA. Um, but I'm sure that will be juices that do change a little bit depending on what uh, bell cap you're using. The fact that you've got four different ones included uh, is pretty cool. So it certainly gives you a chance to play around with those uh, and get some different flavor profiles um, coming out of your liquid. So um, yeah, something we've seen before, but um, maybe not four of them um, in a uh, in an RTA. That's pretty cool. Build quality is very nice, apart from the screw, the, the flathead screw that sheared off on me, but uh, easily replaced with one of the spares. Uh, they do give you plenty of them as well. you got Phillips head options there. But um, in terms of the threading on the rest of it, the machining, uh, it's all very nicely done. I haven't got any complaints anywhere else apart from that dodgy uh, flathead screw. And hey, it's not the first fucking screw to uh, have a problem like that uh, on an RTA and uh, yeah, easily fixed. It's going to be fairly durable if you were to knock it over. The fact that it's got a, uh, a PC uh, tank section and it's also very slim. You know, you've got most of this being a sort of metal. So it's not going to be as easy to fucking break should you knock it over or even drop it. So that's got to be a fucking thumbs up as well. I found the building and wicking to be very easy. Certainly putting the coils in there. It's a deck that we've seen on plenty of the RTAs. It's similar to things like the Ether. So yeah, really like the coil installation. So cons, what could I complain about? Well, the first one, pretty obvious, the screw head that fucking broken half. <laughs> like I said, easily fixed, plenty of spares in the bags. The only other thing that I will mention is with the one millimeter airflow pin, which is what I'm currently using. Um, I think there's a, a bit of condensation kind of settling on that airflow pin or getting inside the pin a bit because I get a little bit of a, it's not a whistle, it's not raspiness it's i mean you can you can hopefully hear it it's a bit of a kind of it's like it's like it's moaning <laughs> um and when i kind of um purge if i blow through the uh, rta i can hear a little bit of liquid kind of clear and then It's gone. It wouldn't be the first MTL RTA to do this. It is sort of kind of a problem with a lot of uh, one millimeter airflow pins in plenty of um, MTL RTAs, but uh, it is something that I've noticed. I just got to kind of purge it and then. It's gone. I don't really get it on uh, the larger airflow pin sizes, but with the one, and I'm sure the 0.8 as well, it will have a similar thing, just those really narrow ones. It's very easy for condensation to kind of get inside that pin uh, and, uh, and just cause a less than smooth or, or less than uh, nice sounding airflow. But um, it certainly doesn't affect the flavor. And as I said, just give it a quick purge and uh, that little bit of condensation seems to go. But 
once I've done that, the airflow is very smooth, and as I said before, the flavour is fantastic. Right up there with things like the Pioneer from BP Mods, which I think is one of the nicest, sort of more budget orientated NTL RTAs. Really, really nice flavour. So, what are these fuckers going to set you back? Well, did a bit of a Google. No, I can't put links in the description as to where you can get these, thanks to YouTube policy, so don't bloody ask me, where can I buy one? Have a search. You'll find them for about $45 US, which is not the cheapest RTA on the market, but it's certainly not an expensive one for something that has had some uh, Italian design uh, influence. It's a pretty reasonable price for you know a high build quality, a nice looking RTA. You know, as I said, very classy, very clean and minimal, and certainly worth uh, having a bit of a, a peek at if you like your um, mouth to lung vaping. But uh, that'll fucking do me, dickhead. So uh, I'll get the hell out of here. I'll put the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you want to see what this fuckwit gets up to outside the YouTube videos. If you want to support the channel, hit the like, hit the subscribe button that would be fucking awesome but if you really want to keep me behind the lens then think about hitting some of my support links as I say every video this is an independent channel which means I don't get paid to do reviews I don't do sponsorships there's no sneaky jumping the queue fees or any crap like that I want to make sure I can give you a truly unbiased opinion on the products I'm talking about but to keep it that way a bit of public support is how I pay the bills hit my patreon page for special content I do a vlog on there once a week you won't see here on YouTube as well as access to my little patreon community you can hang out with myself in the zoom room on the weekends and have a bloody beer and all that sort of shit and a big thanks don't come Patreons, you fuckers keep me doing my thing. So bloody cheers. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub on your fucking dicks off, or your bloody tits off. I couldn't give a shit what it is you're vaping on, whether it's an MTL RTA, an RDL RTA, or maybe it's not an RTA at all. As long as you're not banging the bloody bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking oh.